Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, we are live, so welcome. Hi, everyone. <laughs> hey, everybody. So if you can, we are streaming today on LinkedIn and YouTube Live. If you can be so kind and put in your comments that you can hear and see us, I will, you know, check on my uh, LinkedIn on my, you know, mobile phone. Yeah, I thought multitasking is not right. good for you for your attention no, span. Uh, no, yeah? this isn't multitasking. I just, you know, I'm just checking out <laughs> if, if everything goes, you know, well. You That's know. right. Yeah. And it, we've we've got our friends in Finland already here. TGIT, oh, yeah. thank goodness it's absolutely. Thursday. He's a, he's a chairman of our fan club, you know, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. We're so reason, I think it, this is, you know, guys from the YouTube and I cannot see the, the, the link and, you know, for some reason doesn't work. Ah, OK, now I see it. Still key smooth. It, it takes some time. There's like 24 people on LinkedIn already and it, it it's taking some time. Silky smooth LinkedIn user, Lucia Kolarova, we can hear you and see. Perfect. So. Maybe, Lisa, you can kick it off, you know, our yeah. today, yeah, our discussion. So, hi, everyone. I'm so glad to be here with you all. I love our Thursday evenings, especially when it's winter and it's dark out. I need something to look forward to besides just sitting today, on the couch. The weather, the weather, I don't know about Switzerland, but in Prague, the weather is shit, you know. It's like foggy. It, it was foggy <laughs> until like it's 11. Cold, you know, so oh. it's good to be at home, yeah. With, with slippers on underneath because nobody can see. Yeah. Um, and I'm Lisa Kristen. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the CEO of Kristen Coaching and Consulting. We are executive coaches and we focus on leadership development for 21st century leaders. I personally love to coach superstar performers. So all the people who are already going, I'm determined i will make things happen i will get very successful and then i take them when they're already at the success and then i say let's grow it even further let's get a little crazy right and there's so many great things we can do when someone who's next to you is just saying dream bigger dream bigger why one billion when you can have two for example so that's the stuff that gets me excited and motivated and makes me jump out of bed in the morning that's what we're going to be talking about today but first maybe some of you want to know who's this guy to, to this side of me <laughs> never heard of him before <laughs> yeah and for those of you who people who have been living under a rock don't know who you are who are you <laughs> Yeah, I I spent 22 years in Microsoft, and it was a it was a good mix of great successes and failures, I would say. Uh, and my last job, I was a president for Europe for eight years. I worked with Bill Gates, so uh, quite successful career. But I also failed, and we will talk today about like morning routines and what kind of routines we should have to have like balanced life. And when I failed, it's exactly 10 years ago since I was depressed for half of the year. Very, very bad depression. Three months at home, three months in the mental hospital, really, you know, uh, in, a, in a bad shape. I fully recovered. And now, obviously, I, I, you know, left my, I spent another three years in Microsoft. And seven years ago, I decided to move on. And what I do, I have like special courses. I wrote three books, Positive Leader. I, yesterday, I have heard that even you know that positive leader is used in the church which i didn't know before the the book is used in the church to learn about management which is great <laughs> uh, then, you're, then I, you're officially a holy man Jan. Then, yeah, no, no. <laughs> i wrote another two books unlocking children potential and family as a team that's a very new book you know right i teach at different universities uh here in europe mainly on like in luxembourg in the Luxembourg Business University and it, it in SEAT, in Fontainebleau and at Imperial College. I do some you know, lessons, but also in the United States, a, a lot of, you know, courses. The main theme is like unlocking human potential. But I'm also since like five years ago, I teach kids. I we train like with my counterpart with Katarin, like 7000 kids. And I'm the mental coach for the Czech Olympic uh, top team. In fact, uh, there is a panos, you know, Alekos. He used to be, he used to run Bayern, one of the division of the Bayern in Czech Republic. And he was my coachee. We, have, we are great, you know, friends, even with his son, you know. And Panos moved to Ljubljana. Then he was promoted again. And I think he lives now in 
Berlin, but why I'm saying that is I mean big job with Bayern, which is like chemical concern. But Bayern Leverkusen, that's the team where one of my you know uh, uh athletes, Patrick Schick, who is now one of the best players in Europe, he plays for Bayern Leverkusen. So there's a there's a great you know connection to you know Panos 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 knows that so. I also coach some, you know, uh, athletes abroad, and I have a couple of Olympic Games winners already, and and stuff like that, you know, right? So, Vinsky uh, crying. I'm proud to be chairman of your fan club, same as newly board member elected at Metropolitan Entrepreneurship Society. That's great, you know. And and Ioannis Alekos, that's the son of Panos. He's also here. <laughs> He studies in in uh, UK. You know, I did something for for his you know university. That's great, guys. It's great to have you all here. Okay, so that's all you know. Marketing bullshit about Jan. You know, right? <laughs> Let's now talk real stuff. Okay, so yes. uh, maybe I will kick it off, and we will do like always a couple of you know words, and and you can you know ask questions, have a comments, whatever. Uh, why the habits and why routines are so important in our life, okay? A lot of people think that our, you know, brain is like thought, you know, generating machine. It's very, you know, far from the truth. Our brain is first of all device enabling us to survive. So the first, you know, task for the brain is survival. Second task is really pattern recognition. Our brain likes certainty. Our brain likes, you know, the things which are which are which we are repeating. We 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 are what we do on what we do like you know uh, regularly, right? That's why the habits and routines are so important. Why this is so important? Because brain is not actually reacting to the different situation brain is predicting and that prediction is based what are kind of your, your you know routines and what is in your long-term memory what kind of the situation you went through in your life so your you know uh your senses are like bringing new situation to your brain and your brain is basically comparing what already you know all of those you know patterns with the new situation and tries to like marry those two and then you react your reaction is not new it's based on what you know already this is why you know uh habits and routines are so important in your life and in fact for example with athletes whenever i have like athletes before olympic games before the 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 the, the, the day d or like uh, you know european or the world you know championship they need to mix the right, you know, chemical cocktail in their brain, okay? And there are usually a couple of things what I do with them. Number one, you know, I'm telling them you need to do something you really like. We have to have an com uh, emotional connection to do, okay? It can be meditation, you know, some uh, breathing exercise, stuff like that. Because then endorphin is released and even though you may didn't sleep very well the day before whatever the endorphins are killing pain okay endorphins are 100 times you know stronger than morphine and the other thing and it has to do with our you know habits and routines you know there is a chemical called dopamine okay dopamine is a hormone which is like, it's a reward hormone, which means like if you are like finishing some activity, it's rewarding you saying, hey, this is great, you know. But dopamine is giving you also energy, you know, to continue in that activity. And it's very important what you do, whether you are in the sport or in the business, what do you do in the morning? What kind of the cocktail you create in the morning? Because your brain works, first of all, as a huge chemical factory. Uh, Panos, you know, he knows because he's like, Bayern is a huge, you know, chemical factory, right? <laughs> so, uh, because your brain, if you are in the good shape, you know, and, and you feel good and you have like good, you know, morning and you, you do those good routines, a lot of endorphin and dopamine is released and it has very good impact on your body, on your physiology. Exactly. If you are like stressed in the morning, it's the first thing you do, you take your phone and you start to do on your, you know, toilet, basically emails, <laughs> right? Guess what? You will be very soon pissed off and a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of adrenaline and cortisol is released and you don't feel, you know, good, right? So this is in the nutshell, like, you know, kick it off. Why 
routines and habits are so important in our, in our life. And Jan, what's so important to add here is so many of us think, oh, but I, it's okay that I check my emails because it doesn't bother me. Well, if you're a human and you just listen to what Jan described, it affects you. You might not be recognizing what it does, but you have to work with the way the brain and the body interact with each other. So it can't be that you say, oh, I'm just going to override it. That doesn't apply for me. It does. So this is my, for my first tip to you is rather than trying to mental strength your way through your morning, do the exact opposite. You have to use so much mental strength throughout the day. But instead, work with the way your body would naturally want to awaken. And it does not want to awaken to stress and emails and problems that you're having and things you need to solve. That's other people setting the agenda for your day for you. Why would you give up your freedom? Why aren't you setting your agenda for the day, right? And so we would love to hear from some of you, actually, before we share our morning routines and what we actually do, type into the chat box and let us know what is it that you're doing or what questions do you have about your morning routine? Absolutely. So let, let's, guys, let's go and put, put there in the comments what kind of the morning routines you have or if there are you know, any questions. Then we will talk about our morning routines and how to build the routine, which is another you know, important element because the routine means that you are introducing something new and our brain doesn't like the changes. Our brain likes oh. routines, but we don't like the way you can get to the routine. And that's that's the trick, you know, right? So yes. if, you, if you can put in the in the comments what kind of routines you do in the morning. Because, uh, yeah. And Jan, it does seem that we have a little bit of a delay with the feed. So it might be worthwhile to get started with a little bit sure. of a hint about what we do. Okay, perfect. So First of all, if you want to create some habit or some routine, right? Let's talk about following, okay? Uh, we as a human beings, we want to be like 100% secure. We want to be like ensure that this is what will happen. And now everything is changing exponentially. So this is very tough, you know? So there's a one part where you want to build something, you know, new. But your brain doesn't want to do it. And our brain doesn't no, like no, change. No, no change. Your, absolutely. Your amygdala, which is the, the part of the brain doing like, you know, uh, uh, the, the fear or, you know, the stress. Amygdala is starting when, when the situation is dangerous for you, when it's very new and you don't know what to do. So you can be very uh, soon like chaotic, you know, and then if there is some chaos, you know, right? Yes. So it, it means that our brain likes security. Our brains like stability very much. Okay. Now, what, what can you do to change it? People will change for two reasons. There should be a lot of pleasure in the new situation or it's so painful in current situation. You just need to change. Okay. And the best thing is to, to, do, to do combination of those two. Exactly. Pain and pleasure together, okay? Give you one example. If you are a smoker, for example, you may say, hey, if I will continue to smoke, it's going to be very painful because I will be unhealthy and it, it, it will be very tough. If I will stop, it will be very, very tough, especially if I smoke for 20 years. But the pleasure is I may be 10 years, you know, more with my grandchildren, Okay. That's kind of the, you know, hey, if I will overcome the pain, this is my pleasure. Okay, that's that's kind of the general, you know, way what what uh, what, what you can do. Because, for example, if you want just to lose uh, the weight, uh, very often you may lose some weight and then it's, you know, back. But if you if if the losing of your weight is connected with something you have emotional connection to, for example, you want to do, you know, a great job in the sport or whatever. And you may say, hey, if I will, you know, put my weight like five kilos, you know, down, I'll have a more energy. I'll have more energy to play with the kids in the evening. OK, if I'm overweighted, stuff like that. So you, you can, you know, do that. And then it's really sustainable change. Okay? Exactly. So Getting the motivation. Something where you have this, you know, your heart, the emotional connection. The other thing is, it's good if you are like creating new habits. For example, I was during the COVID, I was not very disciplined with like the food. I was like eating nine o'clock in the evening, whatever. Shit, not good. Okay. So then I decided, I said, okay, 
I like very much to brush my teeth with my electronic Philips, you know, uh, the brush, okay? Whatever it is, I, I have a Philips. I, I really, you know, like to do it, okay? I said, okay, I will brush my teeth at seven o'clock latest, okay? Which means that I need to finish my eating till seven, right? It's like connecting something I really like to something I don't like at, at that moment very much. But once my teeth are, you know, brushed, there's no way I can, you know, eat. Right? At least that's kind of what I what I establish in my brain. And that's what you can do. You can like, you can, you know, put something which you don't like or it's tough for you. You can connect it to the, you know, habit you already have. Right. And it's very important to add here. This is one of the biggest lessons I learned in life. If you're building a new habit and you say, I'm going to follow it 99% of the time, that's actually harder than if you just say, I'm going to follow it 100% of the time. Because if you say, I'm going to follow it 99% of the time, and let's be honest, when the alarm goes off in the morning, most of us are not like, yeah, I'm so excited. Let me do yoga. Right. So what is it that still gets you up and gets you out of the bed? If you just commit 100%, you don't think about it. You don't say, do I want exactly. to, don't I want to, how am I feeling today? You just do it. It's done. Nothing to discuss. If you're at 99%, it actually feels much harder because you then start to check in. Do I want to? How do I feel? Could I skip it today? Should I have a cheat day? And then it's you've already lost so much time and energy there. Just up and out right yeah and it, 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 yeah sorry yeah. go ahead go ahead no go ahead yeah you, you're seeing yeah. some of the it's comments the Alex is writing it's a, there's a soccer game between Czech Republic and Kuwait but Kuwait is not really strong you know team so Czech, Czechs are winning 7-0 okay perfect uh, Zuzana Zuzana Papiko is saying I kiss my daughter and then go for a walk with my dog I think it's a great it is a yeah. it's a it's a very good you you do something which you really you know like like your daughter and then and then and there is a there is a you know tip for you know how to walk the dog uh patrick shig who I, you know mentioned the player for bayern leverkusen is one of the best you know uh best shooters now in the in the bundesliga when he walks his you know dog uh bulldog dog you know in fact uh he he's like meditating because your dog is always in the present moment here and now so if you like follow what the dog is doing, it's actually nice, you know, relax. Okay. That's kind of the addition, but what you can, you know, do. Okay. Yeah. Andre Trichak is saying, first, what I do at the morning is to turn on espresso machine and make coffee. That's enough. That's another, you know, good. That's a good, uh, the coffee, I tell you what, I'm okay. drinking tea mainly. I'm not drinking coffee because it was not good for my stomach, but coffee in general, it's healthy. If you, if it's not overdone, if you are not drinking like twelve coffees a day, it's it's healthy. That that's for sure, and it's good. I think that's a that's another good you know routine in the morning. Yeah, and what's important also to notice here is that everybody's going to have their own routine because so many times you read people's books or you read successful people. Oh, Tim Cook wakes up at four thirty in the morning. So if I want to be successful, I have to wake up at four thirty. No, the reality is what you need to do is find the morning routine that's going to be the most energy giving for you. And that's different for different people. And I have to give you the biggest tip of all, which is you're going to have to experiment. It's not like you can walk away today and say, I can do this at 530, this at 6, this at 630. We have to find what works best for you. If kissing your daughter and going for a walk is the best way to sort of get that mental peace and get away from a phone, perfect. I don't have a dog, so I wouldn't have anyone to walk. I guess put my husband on a leash. <laughs> We, I hope that your husband is not listening. <laughs> you no, know? nah, he never watches these things. I hope it's not like that in reality. You know, it's just a joke. You know, otherwise, as a you know a man, I would need to you know uh, give you some corrective feedback. <laughs> no, well, let's let's yeah. be a couple, you know a couple of more moments. You know, serious, right? Um, let's talk uh, about one you know important thing that it's really step by step because if you if if you have for example new year goal okay my new year habit would be like i want to exercise and eat you know healthy and so on and because of that i will you know lose like 10 kilos okay that's kind of the new year resolution if you will say okay i'll you know lose just 10 kilos you will get this you know big hairy goal it's not enough you will very you know soon give up 
because your brain doesn't work like that. Hey, there's like, you know, I, I, I have been still in my 10 kilos, 10 kilos. No, your brain needs to get small rewards. Okay. Step by step. This is why you need to have that big goal, but then also process goals, how to build that habit. Okay. You need to say, Hey, okay. If I want to lose 10 kilos, that means 1500 calories or whatever 1700 calories a day i need to like run every second day i need to exercise you know i need to be in the fitness three times a week and when you have this you know like daily plan and you are like mentally you know checking out the boxes you know the the dopamine is released and dopamine is saying hey you did something so you feel good hey i'm you know still moving on this is this process you know thing okay because those are like process goals and you still have an energy to continue in that in that you know activity right so th this is why it is important very often they say rome was not built in one day and this is exactly what they mean yeah. okay and uh, you know what i do is i actually use an agile method so for example during covid i have to admit i'll admit all to all of you covid 19 really freaked me out in the beginning with health issues and people were dying and i really said oh my gosh during this time, I really need to get my act together around yeah, health. Yeah, yeah. And so I didn't say, okay, I'm going to be healthy. And all of a sudden I have to change everything in my life. I took an agile method and I said, okay, where do I want to focus for my health right now? And the first thing I did was breathing. I was having trouble breathing out of my nose. So I said, yeah. let me go to the doctor. Let me figure out my allergy test. Let me get breathing covered. Check. Done. I had that sort of focus. Then I moved on. Okay, I have knee problems. Let me go figure out what I can do to get my knee sorted. What kind of exercises? Where do I look? Okay, check. Okay, now I'm going to look at uh, nutrition. And then I could focus. So instead of trying all these goals of be healthy and I want to change my food and do my knee and figure out my breathing, it's too much. You quit, right? It's overwhelming. So just do an agile method where you do one thing at a time really focus on it, really nail it down, as Jan said, incorporate it into your routine, then you're not changing everything all at once, your brain's not going crazy, I just had one little thing in, perfect, and then on top of that, another little thing, perfect, another little thing, and over time, your routine gets so refined, and it's really built to everything you've wanted, but it happened in a very organic, very natural way, where you could really focus, and it was never an overwhelming task. Uh, Lisa mentioned one very important element, and that's breathing. Okay, uh, majority of the people are not breathing, you know, in the right way, including some of my athletes. I, I need a, need really to teach them how to breathe properly. Okay, couple of things: what, how people, what they do, you know, in the wrong way. A lot of people are, you know, breathing by mouth. A lot. You need to. In some situations, you you need to breathe by mouth. But if you breathe too much by mouth. Your, you know, sympathetic nervous system is, uh, uh, you know, basically agile, which means that you are getting, you know, more nervous or more anxious. Your diaphragm is fixed. Your diaphragm is not moving anymore. There's a Czech tennis player, Kei Chikova. She's number three in the world. And she lost on the, I was at the... Uh, Bill Jane King, you know, cup last week in yeah. Prague. And she lost, you know two matches and and she's great but one one thing she's doing in a not great way when she's nervous it's 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 clear from the tv i and i wrote here we are like in the touch you know she she is so nervous that her diaphragm stops to move which means that you are getting pain here okay and here, the diaphragm here. is here yeah, 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 exactly. You, 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 diaphragm is basically the muscle which is helping you to breathe. Which also, if diaphragm is moving, that means for your amygdala, everything is, everything is fine. Okay, if, if you like breathe regularly, and diaphragm is like massaging your digestion system, your, you know, it's, it's called gut, you know, right? So, this is it. And if your diaphragm is not moving, very often you have a problems with your stomach. And we did diaphragm, and that's exactly what what happened to her at the you know, U.S. Open. So, we are we, we if you will start to breathe more by your nose, it will be more regular. You will be more like cool down, and it's much better. The other thing is, 
So breathing, and I will show you some exercises. Breathe more by your nose or breathe as much as you can by your nose, number one. Number two, very often we are like breathing in, which is fine, but then we do that. Especially like if you are sitting like that, you are like, yeah, right. And very often you feel like I'm tired after five minutes, you are like exhausted. The reason is following uh, the, the hormone, which is like distributing uh, oxygen in your blood. Uh, it's called hemoglobin. And hemoglobin needs to have a right level of CO2. Okay. And if you are getting very fast your CO2 out of your, you know, lungs, that's not good. And you feel, you know, tired very soon. Okay. So the first exercise, if you wanted to get like more energized, do following twice, like breathe in by nose, like that. And breathe out by your mouth. Very long. In that way, you will have immediately more oxygen in your blood. My football players are doing it like between the balls. There is a guy in Sparta, you know, Prague Wiesner is the name of the guy. He said, Jan, this is improving my, you know, performance like 20%. Just this exercise, okay? If I can, I, I'm, you know, doing it. So that's one exercise. The other exercise, what they do in U.S. Navy, it's called breathing in the box, and it's following. You will breathe in by nose on four, hold it for four, breathe out for four, hold it for four, and you go like that. So let's try, okay? Breathe in, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four, breathe out, one, two, three, four, hold it, one, two, three, four, and you can go like that. This is, for example, what I do in the morning, for three, four minutes, it's enough, okay? It's like cooling you down. Your brain is on alpha level, on alpha frequency. So yeah, you are like cooling down. But it's also helping you uh, to basically set up the right, you know, uh, level of pH in your blood. So it, it goes against, you know, infection and stuff like that, okay? The other thing is, uh, Wim Hof method, which is like breathing and cold water together. We don't have a time for it, but I will explain you the philosophy behind it. It's a great thing. He will put you, and you can you can get this application for free, or you can get it on YouTube. Okay, he's like artificial, like like breathing in thirty times, like like that. Okay, so he's putting you artificially under the stress. And then we are like breathing in, breathing out three times. And then you are not breathing for one minute. Okay. And he is basically, well, he, there's a, you know, adrenaline release into your blood. And he's like, you know, regulating the pH. And it's a great thing. It's very good for your, you know, immunity. But it's also helping you if you do that exercise three, four times, you know, I, I, I my athletic capacity improved like 30%. Okay. You know, so. It, it is a huge thing, and that's a similar with the with the cold water, you know, right? And yeah. so this, those are like thing on on breathing. Breathing is really key because there is another element. If you breathe properly and you breathe mindfully, you are aware of your breathing. It's much easier for you to concentrate to be in the present moment. I tell you why. Let's everybody breathe in by nose and then breathe out by nose. Okay, let's breathe in. And breathe out by nose. And tell me if you felt any, you know, emotions, doubts, you know, or fear or what? None. None. Because you were here and now. Because your breath is always here and now. Okay. So breathing is great. Helping you to be concentrated. Because only if you are like 100% concentrated, you can have optimal performance. And it doesn't matter whether you are like artist or, you know, business person or, you know, athlete. It doesn't matter. Because only if only if your mind is re reflecting reality, which means I'm here and now, I'm fully reflecting reality, then, you know, the right card will be taken from your long-term memory and your reaction will be proper. If, for example, a tennis player would be 100% concentrated, he or she can, you know, play very well because he was in the situations before. If there's not, you know, 100% concentration, 
that means I will still react, but I will react to the different situation because my mind is not reflecting fully reality. Okay. Uh, let yeah, yeah go ahead and I'll tell oh. you something. I'll connect it to the Buddha. <laughs> The Buddha was saying about the well, well, you've got so many good things going. And I think what happens for so many of us, if you're in the business world, you wake up already, your brain is flowing, you're you have oxygen, you're thinking about the day, you think about where you need to go. And all this stuff, Jan, I mean, you know this from working with corporate clients and from being in Microsoft yourself, people are like, yeah, yeah, breathing, that's a nice to have, but I don't have 10 minutes to sit around and breathe, right? Sounds boring. Oh my gosh, meditation, mindfulness, that's for, you know, the, the hippie folks. I hear things like this all the time. And what people don't realize is your body is your body and you have to work with it and when you do these techniques when you actually just commit and say i'll just try them two weeks no you know if it doesn't work you can quit give it a try for two weeks because what you're going to experience is a complete physical shift that mentally we can't wrap our heads around until we feel it physically so for all of you who are like rolling your eyes like oh another person who's told me i need to meditate and be in the moment Yes, there's a reason we all say this. So trust us, give it give it a two week time span where you really try some of these breathing exercises on a regular basis. I tell people before you go, you leave one meeting, you're going to the next meeting, do a six second breath, do what Jan just said, breathe in. Get it out, get it in, get it out, refresh the body. Because when you refresh the body, your mind is top. And this is so important. Because, guys, you, even if you work and you are making your money through your brain, you are like you have a mental work, okay? Your body and your mind is connected through the emotions. Yeah. And if your body is not in the good shape, very soon your mind will not be in the good shape. Depression, and I was deeply depressed 10 years ago, didn't start like, hey, I'm, you know, mad or whatever. No, I've got, you know, issues with my stomach, with my back. Because that mental pain is somatized in your body first, you know, right? Yeah. This is it. So it's really connected. So you need to take care because today people really, everything is so fast that we don't care about our body at all. We are like, okay, it's my body, you know, it's like serving me, whatever, right? But then if you are not taking care of your body, uh, sometimes it's, you know, too late, right? That, so it's, it's, this is really important. And now, Let's, uh, I'm not Buddhist, okay, but let's talk about, you know, uh, what Buddha, which was great, you know, thought leader, what we, what he thought about, uh, uh, like, being in the present moment and, you know, mind and so on, okay. When I was in the school, we were taught that your brain is influencing your thinking, but not the other way around, that your, you know, thinking would influence your brain. Then suddenly, like 30 years ago, because of the computing power, they came with something called neuroplasticity, which is ability of your brain to change based on the environment around you, what you do, and so on. Okay. Now, what we knew from our predecessors, in old India, they call it karma. Basically, karma says that your present moment today, where you are today in your life, was determined by the present moments before, what you were living, you know, before with your experience and so on. But where you are today, even though you, you may be in the poor family, not in the good shape, whatever, doesn't mean that you will need to live that life in the future. Yeah. Because of the neuroplasticity, it doesn't matter where are your starting blocks. What matters is where your mind can enable you to go because of the neuroplasticity. You can get your brain basically rewired. OK, this is it, because epigenetics means that some genes are nine, up to the 95 percent of the genes are not, you know, turned on or turned off automatically, but but are turned on or turned off based on the environment. It's called epigenetics. OK, yeah. and this is this is what Buddha obviously didn't know about epigenetics or neuroplasticity. <laughs> he was practitioner. That's why Buddha was saying a couple of important things which which we can learn from, you know, even today. He was saying that if you want to be in the present moment, if you want to be concentrated, which is so important, whatever is your job today, if you want to be 100% concentrated to be in the present moment, you need to manage your mind. Okay, You need to manage your thoughts. 
If you want to manage your thoughts, first of all, you need to observe your thoughts. Okay. We believe in our thought and it's not good because we are not our thought. That thought is generated by subconsciousness, by, by our, you know, long-term memory. 90% of the, of the thoughts you have are repeatable every day. And it's generated basically based on what, what you know, you learn, uh, you, you went through, okay? So if you want to, if you observe your thoughts, then you can manage your thoughts. Give you one example. We talked about it, I think, recently. There's a huge difference between the, the words like, I have a fear. That means that you agree with your amygdala, with your, you know, emotional part of the brain. I agree with you, my small monkey. That I'm fearful. And then you are stopping to think logically and you are like very emotional. Okay. If you will say, I observe my fear, that means that your logical part of the brain is observing your monkey, that your monkey tries to do something. Okay. <laughs> that's a, that's a, this is a huge, huge difference. This is observing the mind. And now what is saying? Once you are in the present moment, only in the present moment, your mind is reflecting reality right? Your mind is totally reflecting reality. If your mind is reflecting reality, you see that everything is changing around you, okay? And if you see that everything is changing, you are not attached to anything, which means basically you are flexible and you can go back to the present moment. Why non-attachment is so important? Because a lot of people, if they are making, the because of amygdala, which is like five ten times faster than the logical part of the brain, amygdala is jumping immediately to the conclusions. Oh, it's so bad, you know, right? Because it's a survival mechanism, basically, right? But if you are, like, in the present moment and you are not attached to anything, that means that if you are making some mistake, you are, you are like, okay, it's a mistake, I just learned, and I, I move can't. on, I return back to the present moment. Non-attachment is basically Djokovic, Federer, Nadal, all those guys, who can immediately, for example, Nadal told me one thing which happened to me and when I make a huge breakthrough was when I basically was able to forget about the last ball, whether I won it or lost, doesn't matter. The ball I'm playing now, that's important ball. Right. But because of the amygdala, uh, we are like demonizing our mistakes and that's why we are not succeeding. Mistake is normal way how you learn. You need to do new mistakes. You should not... If you are repeating the same mistake, it's called stupidity, okay? That's not smart. Smart is to do new mistakes. Then your brain is generating neuroadrenaline like the peak, saying, hey, this is really important. You need to learn it, okay? And, and this is it. Uh, yes. This is why we, I tell you what, where I see the big issue in society. We are so much ahead with technology, but we use our brain like our predecessors many, many thousand years ago, okay? We are not using our brain properly because the things we are talking about now are not taught in the schools, you know, right? The school system is like 300 years old. Exactly. And that's why it's so important when you're creating this morning routine, you have to set yourself up. So many people, especially during COVID-19, are just heading towards a burnout. There's so much uncertainty, so much grief going on, so many changes happening, so much to have to try to catch up or make numbers or find a new innovation. Everything's going faster, faster, faster. If you want to be able to survive a 21st century career, you need to be able to let go of some of the stress that builds up and starting your morning stressed is the wrong way to do it. If you start your morning calm, if you have your breathing, if your body is more neutralized, you're much easier to, it's much easier to handle the rest of the day, the things that are coming in. I've got this, right? It's one of those mantras that can keep you going forward. So we've got a question here if you want to bring up. On the morning Rolls birds stars. and the ovals, yeah, absolutely. I'll I'll put it I'll put it on because this is quite interesting. I'm sure you know people will have a different opinions. Brawl stars on Draldo. Uh, hello, is there anything like morning birds and ovals? I feel so numb in the early morning walking or running 5 30 a.m., even though it's cold outside. So yeah, yes. this is hard, you know. <laughs> yes, the answer is yes. This is why I said it's so important to find what's your natural body rhythm and what makes sense for you. 
So for example, I love to do just a little bit of my muscle routines, doing planking, doing some sit-ups, things like that. I love to do that around 9, 9.30 at night. My husband looks at me like I'm crazy and he's going, how, how are you doing fitness right now? That would pump me way up. And I say, no, that's the perfect ending to tire me out get me out of my mental space, get me back into my body, get me a little bit tired so that I can sleep deeper. Mornings, I'm awful in the mornings, but here's something I discovered as we start to talk about our morning routines. I feel very stressed out and anxious and anticipating I have these important things I need to do. If I don't wake up early and get my most important things done first, then I wake up and I feel behind. And the rest of the morning, I'm short with my kids. I'm try I just want to get through. Come on, come on, move it along because I have this stuff to do. So for me, in terms of balancing my energy, even though I'm definitely not a morning person, my natural clock, I would go to bed at 1.30 in the morning. I'm such an owl, but I find that my energy is best balanced that I wake up between at around six o'clock. If I wake up at 530, my body says, no, bad idea. Don't do it. If I wake up at six and I try to go running, my body says, no, I'm too tired. I don't want to do that. I wake up, I have my coffee and I do my work and my workout comes later, which we'll get into. But you might have this sensitivity. Is there a bird? Is there an owl? There are some people who peak in the late afternoon, by the way. Some people peak in the morning. Some people peak at night. Some people peak in the middle. Yes. But work with your energy as best that you can and find that routine, given that sometimes we have to be at work at a certain time or we have to, you know, we have other obligations. Yeah, I, I, I would, I would, you know, first uh, comment and then do a couple of words about, you know, my routines, right? I think this is really individual, but uh, if uh, you are like thinking about, hey, I'm the morning bird, or I'm the oval, who I am, you know, right? There are a couple of things to consider. Number one is if you learn something new, a lot of people think that, hey, if we are now on the, you know, uh, online, uh, you know, uh, video with Lisa and Jan, we are, you know, learning immediately some new things. You are not learning here your learning will be captured, will be mentally represented in your brain during deep sleep. That, that's when the new synapses, which are like synapses are connections with, among your, you know, uh, neurons are created during the deep sleep. So number one, it is a good, you know, to have a good, you know, sleep, okay? And usually the deep sleep is happening for majority of the people before the midnight, the, the really like longer, you know, term. It, it's individual, you know, right? But for example, I have, I've got a couple of, you know, athletes and they, they had a problem with like, you know, getting fall asleep, right? They, they were like sleeping at, you know, one o'clock in the morning. And then they were very tired in the morning and they did not remember the training the day before, you know, where basically they said, we don't remember. That's exactly because of that. So make sure, you know, you, you know, kind of what is best for you. That's number one. Number two, it has to do with the light. Okay. Because mm -hmm. if you're, if, for example, you will like set up, okay, I'll go to the bed at say 12 midnight and I'll get up at eight o'clock and your, you know, uh, eyes will be accommodated with the light like that. And it, it, it's okay for you. Fine. I can't do that. I, I need to, uh, the best thing between 10, 10, 30, I need to sleep already. That's kind of my, and I sleep between seven to eight, you know, hours. Okay. But the, yeah, they just came out with new research. I think it was today uh -huh. that said everybody has better sleep if they go to sleep between 10 and 11. Even if you're a night owl, even if you're a morning person, between 10 and 11 is the best time for your heart health and for your physicality. So that's new research as of today that's been coming out. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. And the last point I want to make, it has to do with uh, the blue light. OK, yeah. you guys are everybody is in a sense, you know, knowledge workers. So we use a lot of devices or even for like entertainment in the evening, you watch it. So it is good if you can use like oh. after eight o'clock in the evening, whatever is the time zone, your, you know, uh, uh, it's like blue light, you know, blocking glasses. Okay. I use, for example, Horus, but there are another, you can get it on Amazon, like for 17 euros. 
but it's really you know good because otherwise if you work on your computer on your tablet or on the phone and it's like 11 o'clock in the evening your brain suddenly start to think oh it's like 11 o'clock in the morning and you like then you have a problem to get asleep okay the one thing which is how to get good energy and be like more you know cheerful in the morning make sure if you get up go out not looking you know uh, through the window at least open the window and you know what have, have a light like you know you, it can be sun or if there's no sunny fine but they get a like daily light for t- at least 10 minutes it's really helping to set up you know the right energy so what, what i do i'm like you know getting up and before i will really like get up i meditate I visualize the day, like what is the day? Usually I have like my calendar in my, you know, brain. So I visualize how the day will, you know, go. And then I do like short, you know, breathing exercise. It goes like for five minutes. Then I do like some, you know, routines. I'm not using, I'm using only my mobile phone in the morning for podcasts. So what I usually do, I'm like downloading some, you know, interesting podcasts and this is it. Otherwise I'm not, you know, using the, the phone at all for the, for the reason I, you know, mention. Then I do sport like for one, one and a half hour. I still listen some good podcasts, which, which I think it's good, you know, for you. I need to do sport in the morning. I, I do also in the afternoon, but I do mainly in the morning. The, the main thing in the morning and in the afternoon, like for, you know, uh, for, the, for, the 30, for the 30 minutes. Before I go for, uh, I do like Nordic walking or running. Uh, I drink uh, like the water, uh, you know, still water, uh, sometimes with the salt, you know, right? That's another, you know, useful because you, you start your metabolism. That's a, that's a good thing. Then what I, what I eat in the morning, and again, this is very individual, but for me, it's really like getting energy and there is a lot of, you know, good stuff. I do like blueberries and, you know, strawberries and stuff like that with the nuts and some yogurt. This is it. That's the, that's the breakfast. And then I have a, you know, hot shower, but then I have like one minute, one and a half minute, very cold shower. Okay, this is it. Uh, so we, but that means that I will do like first kind of the touch with my electronics, nine o'clock or, you know, maybe 8.30 or so. Right? So, uh, yeah, those are the, the routines. And, and my aim is really like to feel good. That's, you know, number one, to make sure that I have a good start in the, in the day. And still learn because my brain, the, the way my brain works, I learn a lot in the morning, you know, right? That's I'm like, hey, this is the new stuff. Then I have some crisis. So I do like some, you know, mechanical stuff around the noon after the, you know, lunch. Or it, look, to be honest, if I have like, you know, seminar or whatever, uh, I do like creative part in the morning and then some, you know, lesson because it's, it's more or less the same lesson. So that's fine. But then I'm getting creative again around, you know, three o'clock and it, it can go. But in the evening, I really, I can sleep like in 10 seconds, you know, which again, if you sleep in 10 seconds, it's not super good because that means that you are very tired, you know, right? It should yeah. be like two, three minutes. Okay. What is helping me a lot, you know, and I'm not like promoting it. I have no vested interest. I pay for this ring. It's called Aura Ring. I will, you know, put it here, you know. Now we're all waiting in suspense. What does it do? What does your ring do, Jan? (laughs) Guys, this is great because this is exactly doing what, you know, Lisa was talking about. It measures the quality of your sleep, okay? Because everybody is different. It will learn you, like, hey, what are your sleeping habits? When is the best for you? And so it measures, like, your, you know, breathing, the, the heartbeat and stuff like that. So every morning, I'm I'm getting... Uh, no, I have a, a Fitbit, that's all I'm okay, saying. Okay, okay. It, <laughs> I wasn't you know, pointing your time. Yeah, I have Garmin, <laughs> but you need to have that, you know, belt. And that's not, oh, you know... You can't good. sleep with that. <laughs> this is really, like, precise. It's good. So it, it will give you, like, you know, the quality of your sleep. And what you should do the next day, it's really learning every day I like your body. It's really good. Now they have a version three. So I recommend you to, it's from Finland, the company. It, it's good. Uh, right. Do you have a lunch during your day? This is quite interesting. I talk actually, I, because we were doing 
some seminar with, with my friend who used to be Pavel Pumperla, who was a captain of the Czech basketball representation, where we are teaching seminar, creating the winning teams. And on our way back, we talk about like fasting, what kind of we have. For me, I can do like fasting in the morning. I can skip breakfast. That's quite, you know, easy. It is more difficult for me to skip, you know, lunch, right? But I think I can skip it if I'm like teaching, you know, and I, for example, would say I will not go for you. I will still, you know, work for that, you know, one hour. That's fine. But then I feel really like exhausted three o'clock in the afternoon, right? Yeah. And and the dinner, it is, again, harder for me to skip the dinner. So best for me would be like the breakfast. For sure, I think fasting, you need to have a advice from the doctor. Uh, fasting is a good thing to do from time to time. That's that's my you know opinion. What what do you think? Yeah, yeah well, uh, well, I don't fast because I have I get really low blood sugars if I don't eat very regularly. But that's if I were to fast, I can skip dinner. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. I can't skip breakfast. I eat crazy amounts in the morning. People like sometimes people are like, how? I literally had someone last week at a seminar was like, how does a small woman like you eat this much? <laughs> but I have to. I have to get my energy and I have to get it going. And for me, that's morning. So I could wait an hour or two for breakfast. I don't have to eat immediately, but I would have to eat. And my morning routine, Jan, it's funny because we have so many things in common and so many things different. So exactly. because when I wake up first thing in the morning, first of all, I have a rule. I don't hit snooze on my alarm. I don't lay around in bed. I don't take a minute. I just, I'm exhausted. I say, I don't care. Get up. Right? Why waste 10 minutes laying around in and bed? And then your, your daughter is making your hair, you know. And then she does my hair. She's stuck. Tell, tell the story. Tell the story with your daughter what happened at the IOC call. So Jan and I are members of the Institute of Coaching that's associated with Harvard Medical School. And we have calls like brainstorming with all the fellows where we talk about the latest trends that are happening in the coaching world. And it's on Friday afternoons during the pandemic. So, of course, my daughters are home with me, right? What am I going to do? And it's very hard for an hour to keep them entertained somewhere over there. So one of my daughters really loves her mommy. So she came over, she wanted to be with me, but I didn't want to talk to her because I wanted to be on the call. So what did I let her do? Styling my amazing hair. I think she was like doing braids. and. <laughs> so I'm on this exactly. very serious call no, with Harper like whole, whole group was watching what is happening there, right? I was like, she said the hairdresser or what? <laughs> But this is what you do working from home, right? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I actually love spending time with my daughter. So it, it's also incorporated in my running routine because my daughters are still fairly young. So I wake up, I get up straight away. I go to the bathroom. I take my probiotic. That for me, I, to drink a cup of water and to take my probiotics still on an empty stomach feels important. And then I don't know about any of you, if you suffer from stress, I have to wear a night guard to stop myself from grinding my teeth. Um, and so the first I used thing to that- have it. When I was living in Germany, I used to have it for yes. one year. I was like, doing yes. that. Uh, so I have to spend a lot of time in the morning brushing my teeth and brushing my third, you know, third set of teeth there. And then I go and I get my cup of coffee. Right now I'm doing an elimination diet, trying to find an allergy so there's no coffee and I'm slowly dying on the inside. But normally I get my coffee and then I sit straight in front of my computer. So it's not that I get on my phone and I'm checking emails and stuff, but I get up and I go straight to work and I keep a post-it note that has what are my most, my three key things for the morning. And every morning I have a new post-it note. So I have a longer list of stuff I need to do but I keep the short list and say, this is what I do. And for an hour, I focus and I do the stuff that needs to get done. Perfect. That's when I then get my daughters ready for school, wake them up, kiss them, hug them, cook them breakfast, pack up their bags, get them out the door. And my youngest one is still in kindergarten. So I usually walk out with her and I walk her to our local kindergarten. It's just a few hundred meters away. It's not far. And from there, is when I go for my run, usually a run. Today I went for a bike ride um, and that's, or maybe it's a long walk. Sometimes I meet the moms and I get my social time in the morning. Right. But like you said, Jan, get out, get fresh air, get exercise, get sunshine. 
when it starts to get like this outside where it's dark in the morning and you're not waking up to any sunlight, I have an artificial sun lamp and I put that in because I want the sunlight. That is a, exactly. There is a, there is a question on the, uh, on the artificial light and I, it's not exactly like the natural light, but it's still better than nothing. You know, I do the same thing in the, during and the red light and stuff like that, it can really give you, you know, energy, especially yeah. like, you know, November, I, I tell you what, November and December, that's the highest number of depressions, you know, right? Because there's not enough, you know, light. And if I was on the antidepressants like for five years and my professor, you know, Cyril Heschel was telling me, hey, if we will like cut the antidepressants, it will be during the summer. No, and, and that's what happened like four years ago, right? Not during the November or December, because you need to get it, you know, right? Yes. This is, you know, right? And that's just it. So Jan, when I'm with my daughters, is usually when I eat breakfast. I eat my big breakfast. I like avocado on um, a homemade, I, I make a homemade like seed bread. So it's not really bread, it's just a whole okay. bunch of yeah. seeds and nuts. Or I'm having, like you said, a yogurt. I actually eat quark. It's not really popular outside of Switzerland, but it's like a thicker, creamier, yeah, style of yogurt with a lot of fruit and chia seeds and things like that to really get the energy going. But I make sure that I supplement sun, summer or not with vitamin D and then other supplements. I do, I I do also. Up. Yeah, this is also because you will have a lot of people who say, ah, you don't do any supplements. Everything is natural. No, it's not. Look, I like sun so much. So I'm very often on sun. <laughs> Still, if I do my blood test, my, you know, uh, vitamin D is low. So I, I'm taking vitamin yes. D. I do some supplements. Absolutely. I supplement. And also you have to remember nowadays we're putting on sunscreen. Exactly. Right? exactly. So we're not absorbing the vitamin D and we really need that. Vitamin D is huge for your energy oh, levels. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, exactly. I yeah. do one and thing. I don't do it in the morning. But for example, today I returned back from our trip and I was like, you know, doing my, you know, sauna routines for, you know, one hour. Sauna is really good, you know, right? Uh, yeah, Miko, right. Is, Miko is saying, uh, Finland, you know, right? Uh, it's fin Finsky Krajanek means like Finnish guy, you know, if you will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great thing to wake up during the winter time here in Finland is to using a lap, creating sunlight, which starts slowly turning on before the alarm. That's good. Yes. And then I do ice cold shower in 15 minutes after waking up. That's perfect. Ooh. So I do my cold shower, obviously, after I do my fitness. And so yeah. I, I try very hard. It doesn't always work, but I try very hard not to book any meetings before 10 a.m. Okay, that's a and good so, thing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I got my girls out. I've done my hour of exercise. I come back. I do my shower. And that's when I do that cold rush. So I only have my one cup of coffee in the morning. But that second cold rush really gets me pumped and fresh right before I go into all my meetings. Um, but like, you know, we've been talking about today, it's managing energy throughout the day. I make sure that I have time to breathe in between meetings. Sometimes I'll just lay down on the floor over yeah. here and for 10 minutes and just. It, yeah, it just 10 minutes. It's enough. Even if you go by taxi, when I was, you know, in Microsoft, I was still like having, you know, like open the computer, doing something, whatever. Now, if I go like by taxi 10, 15 minutes, I just meditate. This is it, you know, right? Absolutely. Exactly. And you, and have, you say really. In five minutes, you can get your energy back. This is it. That's all it takes. And so if you're managing your energy through the day, by the end of the day, then I, I have to tell you, I take about an hour to do my bedtime routine. And yes, I do a lot of face washes and creams and stuff, but really that's my decompression time. So I, you know, I don't work. I really just take my time, go slow. And so that by the time that I get to bed, it's exactly like you said, yeah, and I can fall asleep in a couple of minutes yeah. and then I can sleep and I can sleep very deeply. Um, so that you also really important to remember, guys, is when you're creating your morning routine, balance it with how your nighttime routine is. Maybe that's a whole nother, you know, session for the next time that we talk, because how you do your nighttime significantly impacts how you do your morning. So many people, because we've had so much coming at us all day, all day, all day, we, we don't want to process it. Exactly. We're too tired. We're too anxious. We don't know what to do with it. So we want to avoid or we do revenge bedtime procrastination, this great word that comes from the Chinese, which is, I don't want to go to bed. I don't want to wake up in the morning or I haven't had any time to myself. So I'm going to take my time to myself. And that means all night, instead of going to bed, you're on your phone. 
scrolling through Instagram. <laughs> Edita is Edita is saying here, Edita Hidari is saying, hello, my good morning routine starts in the evening. I have to go sleep at the 10 p.m. max. I, I clean head. Yeah, that's a that's a that's this it. is a great, you know, routine. It's a great habit. Whatever is yeah. happening, uh, you know, just just obviously if you go for the ball or whatever, some events from time to time, that's fine, you know, right? But the one thing we talk a bit about the sport, and one thing because I, I talked to you about the, the glasses I'm using, the the you know, my uh aura ring. Uh I was like struggling to get really good, you know, earphones for the sport. And seems finally I get it. You know, JBL, you know, endurance dive are like headphones, it's like six hours, you know. You can put put some music on podcast on the on the on the on those earphones. I mean, I'm using it with mobile phone, but you can use it also while swimming in the water. Oh, that's a good that's one. That's a great. So it's a JBL endurance that again. I don't have any vested interest. I'm just sharing with you guys what, what I think it's a good piece of technology, right? But so yeah, I'm excited because the next thing I'm gonna take on is I'm gonna try a triathlon. I was always like having you know my phone here and the the, the earphones like you, and it didn't really work. And those are really you know good. And you can, you can, you can, you don't need to, if you put like volume up or whatever, you don't need to do it on the phone. You do it just, you go like that, you know, like you stop it, you know. There really. you go. So guys, make your life simple. Get a morning routine that's fitting for you. So exactly. if you say, by the way, if you say you're not a morning person, I would really recommend start looking at your night routine <laughs> and clean up your night routine because magically you may start to find yourself being a morning person. You might only be feeling the consequences of not getting enough energy through and rest throughout the day and throughout the evening. You might just be feeling that in the morning, but Perfect. find the, yeah, find the one that's right for you, whether it's working, whether it's avoiding the phone, whether it's starting with gratitude, right? And, and remember that it's a step-by-step -step process. So be agile, try adding one new thing in, build that habit, as Jan said, then build another habit over time and go for it 100%. I don't know, Jan, you don't follow this on the weekends, right? Because I just sleep in and do nothing on the weekends. <laughs> But on the weekdays is when I have my morning. Come routine. on, you know, I'm, I'm getting up also like 5 45, 6 o'clock max, you know. No way. I found if I wake up and I do work, I just wake my kids you know, up and then they come down and bug me too. anyway. So I will be 60 in less than two months. There's a lot of people like admiring me, you know, you don't look 60 and, you know, the sport you do is fantastic. It, there's nothing to admire. Sport, it's routine for me. It's like a drug. I need to have it. If I would not sport for two days, I will be like dead with my energy. Really, like I do it yes. because I need to. It's like must, you know, right? So yes, exactly. This is it. <clears throat> and yes. and again and again, those people I really you know coach these days some you know uh, high performers like you know Panos for example here, who's like now running like Europe or half of the Europe or by and such huge you know concern. We I used to you know coach him. So some top performers and all of those guys, they have a great routines, whether they are morning routines or daily routines, doesn't matter. Because those routines are like putting you in the present moment and enabling you to perform very well, even under the tough conditions. Because it's like automatic. I will, that's the last you know, thing I, will, I would like to cover. What will happen if you will build great routines in your life? How routines are represented? Those synapses, which are like representing all activities you are doing, synapses are like fluid connections among your neurons. There is a, an enabling like chemical and electrical signal. If you do something very often, like a sport, there's something called myelin created in your brain. Those synapses are connecting so strong. So the myelin is like huge connection. Imagine two cables, putting those cables together, each and every, you know, small cable together, and then, you know, tape it around. That's basically myelin. If those uh, synapses are myelinated, that means that you can do that activity under very tough conditions because you are here and now. You are like 100% concentrated, number one. And because that myelin is really broad, you can do it fast, okay? That means that if you do like your, you know, routines and habits, you are also getting more, you know, mentally tough. 
My professor, my dear friend, Professor Per, he's 72, he's one of the best cardiochirurgists in the world. His, you know, performance is good if everything goes, you know, well. And it's as much as good as if the, there is a complication because it's, you know, routine for him. And he likes what he's doing, right? This is it. That, that's why routines and habits are very important in our lives because then we can have, you know, whatever is our performance. It can be uh, artistic performance, sport performance, business, political, but it can be sustainable. Yes. So everyone, you heard it, get a morning routine, get a night routine and get a routine for everything else. You will be amazed at how much faster, easier, more successful, more energetic you can be just by following these simple things that work for you. Perfect. Guys, thanks very much. Thank you for being with us thanks. and see you in two weeks. And if you, if you have some, you know, team you would like to cover in your mind, Put in into the comments or, you know, write it me or to Lisa on, you know, LinkedIn. Uh, and we will, you know, do the team next week. Yeah. Or two awesome. weeks from now, sorry. Yeah. In okay. two weeks from now. Thanks, everyone. Perfect. Have a great everything one. Will be, everything is recorded and will be, you know, captured on YouTube and LinkedIn. Uh, we will be very glad if you share it with your friends, as always. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Take care, everyone.